Hello there. In the last video, I mentioned um, that whilst the Windows Recycle Bin is really very helpful, and I know it's helped thousands and thousands of users over the years, the reason why people buy our Underleak software is that because basically the Recycle Bin doesn't capture all deletions. So I thought I'd demonstrate a couple of those situations here and, and really show you how the Underleak software can help prevent those situations where you lose files. Uh, the, when, when they get deleted. So on the screen, I've got a, a couple of virtual machines. Um, on the left here, I have uh, a Windows 10 machine. So that's our, our client machine, our user machine. And on the right here, I've got a Windows server, uh, which will be our, our file server for the uh, purposes of this demonstration. And on here, I've got a, a shared folder. Um, shared on the network and in here I've got some folders containing a number of case studies of our software and, and so on. So this is scenario number one. If I delete a case study normally on the server, what happens? That deletion goes into the Windows Recycle bin and I can get it back, which is great. Lots of people have used that. I can restore it back to its original location and there it is. I've got my file back. Super helpful, really, really good. But if a user, let's open up that folder. So he's accessing that network share from his machine. There it is, there's our shared folder. And so now we're in the same folder on this machine. Now, if we delete it from here, the message is slightly different. Look at this. Are you sure that you want to permanently delete this file? If the user deletes the file from the network share, guess what? It's gone. It's deleted. And more importantly, it's not in the recycle bin on the server or the user's laptop. That file's gone. Do you use network shares in, in your workspace? A lot of people do. Um, so how do we get that file back? Well, it means as an administrator, you're likely going to have to go and find that file on the backup, which is a nuisance. It interrupts your day. The user probably can't continue until he gets that file back. Otherwise, he wouldn't be asking you for it. So it's a huge disruption. Um, so let's install the Underleet software and see how things could be a bit different. So. Let's see, I'll install it here on the uh, server first. Let's run the installer. It's very quick and easy to install, as you'll see. There we go. So next, yes, I accept the license agreement. <laughs> Everybody reads those, right? <laughs> uh, and I want to enable Underleet on all the drives. That's good. And I'm going to install it to the default location. And there we go. Install. So it'll take just a, a moment or two. One thing you'll notice, I'm installing it on a server, but what I'm not having to do is reboot the server once the install's completed. And that's one of the nice features of the software. If you're running a server that's that's got your SQL database on, for example, uh, you really don't want to be rebooting that just to install a piece of software. With Underleak, you don't have to. Um, no, no reboots are required. And I'm not going to register this because I'm just demonstrating it. So that's it. The install's done. Very quick, very simple. Job done. So let's go back to our shared folder. And let's, <laughs> as a user, let's go ahead and, and delete something else. Oh, and you'll notice that that Windows Recycle bin now has gone. It's been replaced with the Underleet recovery bin. So in the velocity folder, I have a whole load of, of case studies here. You know, that would be a nuisance if, if it got deleted. So that's what our user is going to do. Let's go into the same folder. So here we are. Here's all our, our case studies. So let's go ahead and delete them. So still get the same message from Windows. Are you sure that you want to permanently delete these 21 items? And I'm sure users really pay attention to what the, the question is actually saying all the time. 
Hmm. <laughs> so yes, I want to delete those. And now they've gone. Now, as you saw before, the user deleting them from a network share means they're permanently deleted. They're gone. But not now that we have the under the recovery bin from undelete. So I can open the software up and I've got a helpful tree on the side here where I can find my shared folder and all of those case studies. There they are, all there. So I can say, let's recover all of that data and let's put it back to their original location. OK, job done. All those files are back. Now, wasn't that convenient? I mean, just as convenient as the Windows Recycle bin, but even more convenient because it was actually able to recover those files that have been deleted from the network share by the user. Now, I know nobody likes to think that that happens, but believe me, it does. Now, similarly, if you delete files from the command prompt, they don't go into the Windows Recycle bin, but they would be captured by the Undelete Recovery bin. Basically, the way it works is we use a very thin storage filter driver that gets inserted into the Windows Storage Stack that has the ability to capture all deletions on a machine, regardless of how it occurs, whether it's done from the command prompt, whether it's done by a remote user accessing the network share, or if it's deleted from within some applications. And ordinarily, it wouldn't go into the Windows Recycle bin, but Underleet can capture them all. So I hope that's been useful. Um, and I know we, we saw a, a quick look at the uh, Windows, uh, sorry, at the Underleet interface. Let's have a look at that again. Let's make that full screen. It's very intuitive. It uses a, a ribbon, just like a lot of other Microsoft software, especially uh, things like the uh, Windows File Explorer. Very simple to use. You can um, recover files, um, empty the bin just like you can with the Windows Recycle bin. Uh, you can go into Tools and recover deleted files. Um, so that's files that even perhaps have been deleted before you installed the software. That can be quite helpful. You can wipe free space. You can modify the settings, um, have an inclusion and exclusion list. And I'll go into some more of these features in a little bit more detail in the next few videos. But for now, I hope this was useful. Um, if you want to know more, if you want to try the software, please jump onto our website at conducive.com and you can request fully featured 30 day trial way. Um, try it for yourself. See if it's something that would be useful for you. So I hope this has been useful and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks. Take care.